Hey everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today I want to talk about the collective exercises. I'm making this video today because I really want to talk about the purpose and importance of the collective exercises as well as some of the challenges before I get into showing you the operations. There are a lot of things that teachers struggle with when it comes to the collective exercises, and hopefully this video will help you out and explain some of the difficulties behind the collective exercises and also why they're so important and why maybe they aren't clicking with you if you're having some trouble with them. So I'm going to put out this video first and then I'm going to start working on recording the operations for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The difficulty in finding enough space and time to present the collective exercises is one of the reasons why so many Montessori teachers avoid them. During COVID, many of our classrooms had even less space because several schools required individual tables for each child and more barriers put up in the environment. I know many Montessori guides chose not to do the collective exercises during COVID because it was just too difficult to find a place to present these larger works. And the same thing happened with the bead chains. Smaller environments struggle to include such important lessons because of the physical limits of the classroom. I have known a lot of teachers who skip these collective exercises and move on to the stamp game or the strip boards or the finger charts. But these are much more abstract materials. If you have struggled with including the collective exercises in your classrooms, feel free to comment below on where you have felt limited or found challenges to presenting these lessons. Also feel free to comment on how you have adapted these lessons for your environment or for children with different needs and abilities in your classroom. Let me first explain why the collective exercises are so important. First of all, the collective exercises are a very concrete presentation of the decimal system and math operations. These concrete experiences of math reinforce the neural pathways in the brain and provide a strong foundation for the abstract learning the children will work on as they get closer to the second plane of development, which starts around six years old. The second reason why the collective exercises are so important is they are really geared towards four-year-olds. If you wait until the child is five to six years old, you may miss the window of opportunity for these lessons. As children get older, they are less interested in these concrete lessons. They want to do more abstract work, but younger children thrive on concrete work. Understanding the developmental progression of the three to six year old environment is important because even within this small age span, you have intense developmental changes. While you don't want to rush children into the decimal system, you don't want to wait either. Your first year children should master the concept of symbol and quantity for the numbers zero through 10, and then you should move on to those introductory lessons on the decimal system. The third reason why the collective exercises are so important is that second year children have a lot to accomplish in the math area, and that really starts with the decimal system. So these second year children need to work on the concept of the decimal system, as well as all the math operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and then they also have a lot of other things they need to be working on, and this decimal system really sets the foundation. They have to master the teens boards, the tens boards, the bead chains, the linear and skip counting. All of this is beginning in that second year. If you don't start with those collective exercises at the right time when the child is ready for it, it becomes really difficult to catch up in your math area. There's a lot going on that second year that the children need to be working on in the math area. And all of that is necessary before they move on to the abstract work in their third year. All of this sets the foundation for the third year. The fourth reason why the collective exercises are so important is that it offers social activity. They are called the collective exercises because this is an opportunity for the children to be together in a group and enjoy working with each other. The concept that Montessori isolates children from each other and only allows individual work is a complete misinterpretation of Montessori's ideas. Montessori valued collaboration. She valued group work. She valued leadership in the classroom. She wanted the children to be independent, but that doesn't mean alone or isolated. 
It doesn't mean children cannot help each other. It means that the children have learned that they can ask each other for help. They can collaborate with each other and the adult's role becomes more limited as the children's roles expand. This is what you want in your classroom. Montessori classrooms should be joyful. They should make audible sounds and embrace those sounds that come naturally with the work. They should be peaceful environments that invite children to work together if there's a purpose for them to collaborate. The central focus of the classroom should not be the guide. It should not be the adult. The adult is there to set the example. But once the children begin to follow the guide's example, it is the guide's responsibility to step back and allow the children to demonstrate their mastery. The fifth reason why the collective exercises are so important is that you can bring older children back to them in a different way. So I often include my third year children in my collective exercises lessons so they can be my assistant. They can help with the process. These older children can help second years with getting the correct numbers and quantity, and eventually they can lead the process of the collective exercises without the need of an adult. There are always a few of my third years who are ready and willing to be the teacher and lead the collective exercise activities with the younger children. This is the best way to use the collective exercises with older children because they will be more invested in being the leader than being the recipient of these lessons. Plus, this is a great way to give them a refresher on how these operations work in a concrete way as the children are moving towards more abstract experiences of math. So if you have older children that need the collective exercises and they don't seem to be showing much of an interest in it, try giving them a slightly different role with this activity. Have your younger children as the recipients of the lesson, but then the older children can participate too. Bring them back to this activity. This isn't something that needs to be isolated from each other. The Montessori classroom, each child is connected to everything and everyone, but sometimes the context is different and we need to embrace that and bring children into the environment in very different ways and be creative with our teaching. I often tell people that our Montessori training and our Montessori albums are just the beginning of our journey. They are the foundation. They're not the end of the journey. This isn't where you're going to end. This is the beginning. So feel free to take your training and take your albums and use that as your foundation, not your end point. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that everything I've covered here has been helpful and hopefully a little bit inspiring for you. And hopefully you feel empowered to be creative and flexible and stay committed to these experiences and to these lessons and don't skip over them just because there are challenges and limitations in your environment. That being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next video.